In real life, time travel isn't so easy. In fact, it's probably impossible. A fantasy more far-fetched than visiting Alice's Wonderland, finding gold at the end of the rainbow, or cleansing all the hate speech off of Facebook. More than 100 years ago, a famous scientist named Albert Einstein came up with an idea about how time works. He called it relativity. This theory says that time and space are linked together. In Einstein's theory of gravity, general relativity, space and time are merged as space-time, which allows for the possibility of pathways that could bend back to the past and loop back to the future. Such paths are known as closed timelike curves. They're a little like giant circles. They're a little like great circles around the surface of the Earth. If you start out in one direction and keep going straight, eventually you'll come back to where you started from. In that case, the Earth's curvature guides you back to your previous point in space. With closed timelike curves, the geometry of space-time guides you back to an earlier moment in time. Einstein's intellectual leap was to suppose that an exchange rate from a time to a distance in space-time is universal, and it is the speed of light. The faster you move, the slower your clock ticks relative to ones you are moving past. The word relative is key. Time will seem to pass normally to you. To everyone standing still, however, you will be in slow motion. If you were to move at the speed of light, you would appear frozen in time, as far as you were concerned. Everyone else would be in fast forward. So what if we were to travel faster than light? Would time run backwards as science fiction has taught us? Next stop, wormholes. Traveling into the past could be hard, but maybe not impossible. Einstein also told us that the force of gravity is a consequence of the way mass warps space and time. The more mass we squeeze into a region of space, the more space-time is warped, and the slower nearby clocks tick. If we squeeze in enough mass, space-time becomes so warped that even light cannot escape its gravitational pull and a black hole is formed. And if you were to approach the edge of a black hole, its event horizon your clock would tick indefinitely slowly relative to those far away from it. So, could we warp space-time in just the right way to close it back on itself and travel back in time? The answer is maybe, and the warping we need is a traversable wormhole. But we also need to produce regions of negative energy density to stabilize it, and the classical physics of the 19th century prevents us. The modern theory of quantum mechanics, however, might not. In the late 1980s, Kip Thorne of the University of California at Berkeley suggested that objects known as wormholes exist in space. These objects would essentially be two connecting black holes, whose mouths make up a tear in the fabric of space-time. By finding a wormhole and stretching it, so one's mouth extends light years away from the other, the wormhole could provide a passageway to past or future point on the undulating river of time. Thorne developed the theory after Carl Sagan had asked him whether there could be a way he could send the heroine of his novel, contact billions of miles to meet an alien and return home the same day. The book and the movie by the same name, starring Jodie Foster featuring Thorne's wormhole phenomenon. The idea may have worked nicely for Sagan's novel, but the actual theory still has significant problems. Besides locating a real wormhole, scientists would also need a way of finding to keep the wormhole's entrances open long enough for a person to pass through. Due to quantum mechanics, the field of physics that governs the mechanics of the inner world of atoms, forces would cause the time machine to instantly squeeze shut. Some have proposed solutions to this problem, including filling the wormhole with large amounts of exotic or negative matter. But the solutions would require enormous energy and ingenuity. It would also require that scientists find a way of merging Einstein's law of relativity with those laws governing quantum mechanics in a so-called theory of everything. Time machines to the past are projects only a super civilization could attempt, said Gott. It would require a civilization that has the resources of the galaxy at its command. Going back in time brings us up against the laws of physics, where some processes are reversible and some irreversible. Some processes such as, say, an avalanche can't happen. Likewise, on a much smaller scale, if you drop an egg, you can't unbreak it. A spinning top, however, or a pendulum, is reversible because it keeps moving, repeating itself. Nothing really happens. Within physics, we're very aware of these issues. The world is irreversible, and so are our lives. We grow, we age, we die, says Dr. Steen. 
you can't reverse the effects of an avalanche or similar catastrophic event. And that's why going back in time is not possible, nor ever likely will be. Traveling into the past comes with greater hurdles and requires yet to be discovered objects like wormholes. But I have a feeling it will happen soon enough. Hopefully, at least some of us can live to see it. If you're feeling disappointed that we can't literally travel back in time, then remember, there's nowhere you can't go in your mind. But don't worry. Think about history lessons, where you're asked to imagine yourself in someone else's shoes from a long ago. That's time traveling. Or when you look at old photos of fun times with friends and family, that's time travel. And what about when you read a book or listen to a story told by a grandparent? Traveling through time is just like traveling through space. You move along a certain path, which we are presuming the universe was helpfully arranged so that your travels bring you to an earlier moment in time. But a time machine wouldn't look like a booth with spinning wheels that dematerializes now and rematerializes some other time. It would look like a rocket ship or possibly a DeLorean. In the unlikely event that your closed time-like curve started right here on Earth and never left the road. Think of it this way. Imagine there were a race of super intelligent trees who could communicate with each other using abstract concepts but didn't have the ability to walk. They might fantasize about moving through space, and in their fantasies, space travel would resemble teleportation, with the adventurous tree disappearing in a puff of smoke and reappearing across the forest. But we know better. Real travel from one point to another through space is a continuous process. Time travel would be like that. Suspended animation. Another way to travel to the future may be to slow your perception of time by slowing down or stopping your bodily processes and then restarting them later. Aceterial spores can live for millions of years in a state of suspended animation until the right conditions of temperature, moisture, and food kickstart their metabolisms again. Some mammals, such as bears and squirrels, can slow down their metabolism during hibernation, dramatically reducing their cells' requirement for food and oxygen. Could humans ever do the same? Though completely stopping your metabolism is probably far beyond our current technology, some scientists are working towards achieving inducing a short-term hibernation state lasting at least a few hours. This might be just enough time to get a person through a medical emergency, such as a cardiac arrest, before they can reach the hospital. But on top of it all, we all travel in time. We travel one year in time between birthdays, for example. And we are all traveling in time at approximately the same speed. One second per second. Time travel is indeed possible and believable, but maybe not backwards for now.